introductions and uh, each speaker will make a statement regarding the Willie Abder Brown case. Uh, when all of the speakers have concluded, we'll have time for a few questions. Uh, we ask that you please state your name and your news affiliation and who you're directing your question to. We have with us today Chief Mike Inero, who is the City of Jacksonville's Director of Public Safety. We have NCIS Special Agent in Charge Joe Kennedy with the Carolinas Field Office and the Honorable Ernie Lee, District Attorney. Uh, we're going to get started with Chief Inero. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, we thought it was important today to thank everybody involved in this case. First, I'd like to thank the victims. I appreciate their courage. It took a lot of courage to relive all these events, and we couldn't have resolved this case without them. By convicting this dangerous criminal on those 33 counts, the members of our jury have sent a clear message that our community will not tolerate this type of violence and despicable criminal activity inflicted on these innocent victims. The work of our officers on this case is about justice for those victims, an integral step in the road to recovery from the harm inflicted upon those to become whole again. You know, one of the things that we hope comes out of this case is other victims that, uh, that could have been victimized by this suspect. We hope they come forward too because there's, there's a lot of uh, community services and victim services that we can offer. I'd like to recognize Detective Anthony Ramirez and Special Agent Josh Lawson for their tireless work in this investigation. Uh, Detective Ramirez is, is seated in the back room. Um, Special Agent Lawson couldn't get here. Their dedication to the work on this case for days, nights, weekends, over a period of several months resulted in the charges against Mr. Brown. The attention to detail by the crime scene investigators, the thorough preparation of all the investigators is to be commended. There was evidence collected, efforts from everyone involved, the patrol officers, the crime scene investigators, the detectives, the special agents, the crime lab personnel from the SBI and the NCIS to the district attorney. I think it's important to note that Mr. Brown is a career criminal and he learned from his past convictions. It was the attention to detail that these officers gave that allowed us to obtain the physical evidence we needed for our conviction. This case epitomizes the teamwork and collaboration between our agencies NCIS and the DA's office. And now I'd like to turn it over to Ernie Lee for a few comments. I tell you, Onslow County and Jacksonville are safer places today because Willie Brown is in jail. Um, I agree with what Chief Assistant DA Michael Maltzby said the other day on Friday after the verdict came back that uh, Brown is one, if not the most dangerous people, one of the most dangerous people we prosecuted. And I would agree with that. I've been here 27 years, and this individual certainly needed to be off the streets of Onslow County. I commend my prosecutors, Chief Assistant District Attorney Michael Maltzby and Jamie Askins for their long hours and hard work in this case. They spent a lot of time on this case. They updated me routinely about this matter, and I know they spent a lot of time working on it. This was a difficult case due to the number of allegations involved, the type of charges involved and the circumstantial nature of some of the evidence, but nonetheless, they worked extremely hard to make sure that justice was done in this case. Mike and I have tried many murder cases together. We're preparing some right now together, and he's proven to be an outstanding prosecutor, and I certainly appreciate the work he's done in this particular case. Jamie Askins has over 15 years of experience. He, too, has prosecuted quite a few cases, and I appreciate his experience. I commend the Jacksonville Police Department and the Naval Criminal Investigative Service for their long hours and diligence and hard work in investigating this case. The prosecutors cannot prosecute a case successfully without good law enforcement work. We don't go out and investigate the case ourselves. We rely upon law enforcement, and I certainly appreciate the hard work placed in these, by these agencies in this case. They did an excellent job, and this demonstrates the necessity of interagency cooperation in solving these, uh, these type cases. I also commend the uh, crime scene investigators at the scene. I've tried enough cases. You've got to have physical evidence. You need it. 
and I appreciate the crime scene investigators in this case by taking the time to do a diligent search for physical evidence. Furthermore, the crime lab in Raleigh for their diligence. I know they're behind up there. They've got a lot of cases pending, but I certainly appreciate the efforts they've placed in this case in making sure we got the lab reports back. NCIS has worked with JPD and the Sheriff's Office in this county and other high-profile cases and serious cases, many of which I've been involved in, including Cesar Lorian and Reuben Wright, both charged and convicted of first-degree murder. I certainly appreciate the relationship we have with the Jacksonville Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, and the NCIS. I lastly commend the victims for coming forward and being willing to testify in the trial of Willie Brown. They're truly the real heroes in this case because without the victims and their willingness to testify, we would not be able to proceed in these type cases. And I certainly appreciate all they did in putting forth the effort to come and meet with the prosecutors, meet with law enforcement, and then be available and willing to testify in court. Of course, I also appreciate the verdict of the jurors. I know it was a two-week trial. It was a very long trial. I know that um, it took them away from their families, but the system of justice could not work without the willingness of jurors to serve. And I appreciate their unselfish service in this case. I would like, <coughs> we'd like to ask uh, Special Agent Joe Kennedy to say a few words, please. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. I would uh, um, really just like to echo both the comments of Chief Yanero and District Attorney Lee. Um, first of all, uh, the victims in this case. Uh, this was a very brutal predator. And for them to have the courage to come forward, uh, particularly in the trial phase, uh, is just, you, you have to have that to complete uh, all facets of the judicial process. So I just want to commend them for coming forward. The jurors, uh, this is, these were very complex cases. These were not simple cases. They involved uh, a very uh, uh, extensive uh, crime scene searches, examinations. Uh, and, and in-depth forensic uh, review. And I just want to thank the jurors for taking the time to, to listen to all of that evidence, and, and, and we're most appreciative of that. And lastly, um, what I really want to, want to stress today is um, you have two leaders behind me, Chief Mike Gennaro and District Attorney Ernie Lee. And I'm from the federal level, but let me tell you that in all of my 28 years of law enforcement, never have I encountered two leaders of these gentlemen's quality. To uh, partner with federal partners sometimes is difficult because we bring a, a different set of variables to the table. But both of these gentlemen, uh, you know, I said it here earlier in the week, we're really blessed. This community is blessed to have these two gentlemen leading their various agencies. Um, and without them, this, this case simply would not have been successful for them to have the, the vision to bring a task force together like we did and, and, uh, and, and a cohesive unit uh, and it was really just humbling for us at NCIS to watch this thing uh, unfold. And then lastly, to the investigators that worked on it, um, both the agent out of my office, Josh Lawson, and Anthony Ramirez with the Jacksonville Police Department. These gentlemen just spent tireless hours, you know, working weekends, nights, missing a lot of holidays, family time, etc. And uh, my hat is off to both of you gentlemen for the tremendous effort you did. And uh, again, I just want to I want to thank you, Mike, personally. Uh, for the tremendous relationship and Ernie as well for the tremendous relationship and support. We'd be glad to entertain any questions. <clears throat> Chief, you mentioned, uh, Mike McHugh and Daily News. Chief, you mentioned about uh, victims coming forward. Over the course of the two week trial, the case garnered a lot of uh, publicity both in print and on TV. Have other supposed victims or uh, potential victims come forward to your office? No, they haven't, but we would encourage them because, um, again, there's a lot of victim services that are out there. And our goal, you know, our goal obviously is to prosecute the case, but it's also to make the victims whole again. And in order to do that, we want to provide them with those services. And we think it's important that, that if, if they're out there that, they come, that we, they come see us and talk to us so that we can, uh, we can help them with that. Chief, this is Michael Todd with the Daily News. Are there other victims likely known to, to authorities? I know it's a question that's kind of been asked. If, if, we, if we know about them, then obviously uh, we, have, we have looked at those cases. We have uh, presented those cases to the DA. So, I, I, you know, I'm not sure what you're asking other than... Are there other victims known to authorities? 
Well, I, I think that we looked at all the victims, okay? We looked at all the victims, all the cases. In fact, uh, on this particular case, we looked through every um, sexual assault and rape case that we've had over the last year and a half. Went back and reinvestigated those, went back and looked at a lot of the evidence in those to make sure that we, um, that we established those cases that Mr. Brown committed. It really is WITN. I think what he's asking, because I think I, um, I think there were other victims that, that had come forward, is that right? And that there may not have been enough evidence to prosecute in those cases. Is, is that correct to say? I'm not going to comment on any other pending investigations. Um, the Sheriff's Office had sent out a press release earlier today saying that um, he, Willie Brown, had actually assaulted an inmate during the trial. Do you all have any comment on that? I mean, shows he's not just dangerous to the community, but people right. inside the jails. So. That in fact, uh, he was in fact charged during the child, uh, trial of assaulting another inmate. Um, I was made aware of that. Um, we deemed it appropriate not to release that information at that time simply because uh, we did not want to affect this particular trial and make sure he got a fair, impartial trial here. I can tell you, though, that uh, I was in contact with the sheriff on Friday night. I was in contact with the sheriff again early this morning. And I also met with the detective from the Onslow County, Onslow County Sheriff's Office in that case. And uh, based upon my review of that particular case, based upon the fact this individual just received 410 years minimum, and based upon the fact I have safety concerns of bringing this defendant back and forth from uh, DOC to the Onslow County Jail, uh, we have decided not to proceed on that particular assault. And it's my understanding that the, uh, the other inmate was not uh, particularly pushing to, uh, to prosecute anyway. And uh, he also has charges pending because he was also in the Onslow County Jail. And we decided not to prosecute that particular case. So I took a dismissal as to that case this morning. Actually, Mr. Maltzby took a dismissal this morning. Brandon Goner, WNCT. Is Brown currently in solitary confinement or is he being kept away from the inmates as a result? That I don't know. That's uh, completely, totally up to the Department of Correction. Once he leaves Onslow County, he's uh, transported by the Onslow County Sheriff's Office up to Central Prison up in Raleigh. At that time, it's within the discretion of Central Prison as to where he will be housed. If a victim came forward and the evidence was strong, would the state spend the time and the resources on as you said, bringing them back to Onslow County to try them for another first degree. Like, if you have 4,922 months, I mean, how much more could you or your office would spend on it, or would you just close the case on that? I'll tell you what, we'll evaluate each case on its own merits, and if we think we can prove a case, we look at strength of case. If we can prove a case, we'll go for it. What kind of protection is available to victims just to let them know? Well, obviously, I think the press does an excellent job at this, is simply not divulging their names. That goes a long way right there, and we certainly were trying to be very protective in court as well. Of course, they have to testify. People know who they are. Certainly, jurors know who they are. But nonetheless, I was very uh, pleased that the press did not ever place their names in the newspaper, because obviously that could have a chilling effect upon other people coming forward. Um, these people are having to speak about very just awful details that have occurred to them, awful things, and yet um, they're having to do it in front of many strangers that they don't know in the courtroom, and I'm just grateful that it's not made public who these people are. Um, of course, at our office, we also try to protect the victims as much as we can in terms of maybe sometimes using initials and indictments and things such as that. You know, we can only do so much because of case law out there, but we certainly try to protect the victims as well. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for coming. We certainly appreciate it.